you know? The very first Mega Man game on the Nintendo Entertainment System was originally going to have eight robot masters? Although eight bosses is now a staple for the franchise, the original Mega Man is unusual in that it only includes six. This was due to technical limitations at the time, but by the time these limitations came to light, Capcom had already designed seven robot masters. The robot master that was removed is named Bond Man. The original six robot masters were created as industrial robots gone bad, and represented trades such as construction and timber felling. Bond Man was likewise designed to fit this theme, and would have used a powerful industrial adhesive that would hold enemies in place upon landing a shot. This mechanic was instead utilized for Iceman's weapon, the Ice Slasher. Bond Man later made an appearance in a manga titled The Men Who Created Rockman, the Rockman Creation Legend, illustrated by artist Hitoshi Ariga. Ariga would later go on to create the Rockman Remix, Megamix, and Gigamix manga series. Bond Man garnered a bit of a cult following in Japan, and the long-lost Robot Master nearly had an opportunity for return in the 2006 PSP remake Mega Man Powered Up. Producer Keiji Inafune considered using Bond Man as one of the two new Robot Masters in the game, but ultimately scrapped the idea, stating, I thought about reviving Bond Man, but it was a little tough. What we could present in Rockman Rockman was a little different than the time I created Bond Man, so rather than throwing him in hastily, I decided to leave Bond Man as the legend he is, and I created two new characters instead. The two Robot Masters in question were, of course, Time Man and Oil Man, bringing the original game's total up to eight Robot Masters in line with the tradition of every other classic Mega Man game that followed. The Mega Man Battle Network series was created for the Game Boy Advance and was inspired by the growing popularity of cell phones and the internet with a young Japanese audience in the early 2000s. The concept of a cyberspace version of the Blue Bomber came from this idea and led to other classic Mega Man characters such as Roll, Proto Man, Base, and the many robot masters being repurposed as digital beings called Net Navvies. Human Partners, or Net Ops, were also created to illustrate a sense of story-based control over the Net Navvy characters and to add further relatability to the player. When developing Battle Network's gameplay, the team found blending an action game like Mega Man with new RPG elements proved to be very difficult. The game's director, Masahiro Yasuma, stated, There were two things that were kind of problematic about Battle Network 1. First of all, there was never a game of its type before. There was no pattern to follow, no rough idea to go upon. If there was any type of game, it was never really successful. They all failed. Coming out of this failure, the Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh! franchises were used as the model of what to go on, as they were considered the closest equivalents. The Battle Network series has collectible battle chips that appear throughout the games. From Battle Network 4 onward, two versions of each game were released containing different chips and net navvies to collect and battle against, with connectivity between the two versions in the style of Pokémon. However, according to the Mega Man Battle Network Official Complete Works Art Book, the original pitch for the first Battle Network contained an idea of having three different games, each with their own playable characters. The document states that version A would star Lan Hikari and Mega Man.exe, created specifically for the anime series that would air alongside the game's release, but these two would eventually go on to be the central characters for the entire franchise. The scrapped versions B and C would feature a pair of twins named Sei Mai and Rodo Kazumi, who would operate a pair of navvies called Mega Man Buster and Mega Man Blade. A note on this same document states that while the stories of all three games would tie into each other, only one game would be required in order to collect all available battle chips. This contrasts with the Pokemon style the series would later take. One unused concept from this early document is a boy named Mike Kennan. Kennan was originally set to be Roll.exe's net op and would have been an unlicensed net battler older than Lan and his friends. It also states that Mike Kennan would have passed along Roll.exe to Male Sakurai and would have then taken up an earlier version of Base.exe. Ultimately, Kennen was scrapped, Mail was made into the sole operator of Roll, and Base was given an entirely separate backstory in the games that followed. The Mega Man series has a tradition where many of its characters are designed by supporters of the series. Fans would enter into contests held by Capcom, who were looking for new boss characters in each game. The eight Robot Masters from Mega Man 2 through 7, as well as six of the Robot Masters from Mega Man 8, all started as drawings sent in by kids and were later refined to fit the art style of the games. Although the grand majority of the winners were Japanese, there were two winners from North America that created Robot Masters for Mega Man 6, where an international robot tournament was being held with representatives from all over the world. Daniel Valet from Canada created of Nightman claimed to have submitted so many boss ideas that they could have filled up at least eight games, including examples such as Wave Man and Samurai Man. The other North American winner was Michael Leader, who created Mega Man 6's Wind Man. Ironically, during Capcom's very first boss contest alongside Mega Man 2, Keiji Inafune not only provided his own version of Wind Man as an example of what to submit, but he also drew up his own versions of Drill Man, Hornet Man, and Pump Man, all of which would eventually go on to be real robot masters in Mega Man 4, 9, and 10, respectively. Similar 
contests were held for the Mega Man Battle Network and Star Force series, starting from their second games and onward as well. Even the Japan-only crossover game Rockman.exe Operate Shooting Star featured a contest winner's character, originally submitted as an FMian called Clock Genius, and then redesigned into a net navvy called Clockman.exe, in order to fit with the setting of the game. The most recent examples come from the unfortunately cancelled Mega Man Legends 3, where a boss, an enemy, and an animal character were all designed by members of the Capcom Dev Room Forum. They were set to appear in the prototype version of the game before the plug was pulled on the entire project. The mobile game Rockman Crossover had its own contest, with the winner's creation being Arcade Man, a robot master who attacks by summoning other Capcom characters. The last bit of interesting Mega Man trivia this time around comes from the Disney animated film Wreck-It Ralph. The movie featured cameo appearances by several real-world video game characters from various games, including a few from Capcom's Street Fighter series. However, Dr. Wily from the Mega Man series was supposedly going to appear during an early scene where Ralph is visiting the Bad Guys Anonymous group. A photo from the D23 magazine featured a shot of Ralph talking to Zangief, Bowser, and Dr. Wily. But later that year, in November 2012, the movie premiered and Dr. Wily was nowhere to be found, instead replaced with a generic ninja character. It's unknown exactly why this happened, but since Mega Man Universe and Mega Man Legends 3 were both cancelled the previous year in 2011, while Wreck-It Ralph was still in production, it very well might have been connected to Keiji Inafune's departure from Capcom the year before that in 2010. Of course, some more uplifting news came from Mega Man himself appearing in another massive crossover featuring many iconic game characters, as he was announced to be a playable character in the new Super Smash Bros. for 3DS and Wii U. That's all we got time for today, but don't forget to subscribe to Did You Know Gaming on YouTube and follow Did You Know Gaming on Facebook and Twitter. Make sure you also check out DidYouKnowGaming.com, and if you like this video, check out our other videos as well. And if you've ever been curious about the voices behind some of your favorite Mega Man characters, you might want to check out my unofficial spin-off of Did You Know Gaming called Did You Know Voice Acting. Like, I bet you didn't know that Base.exe from Mega Man Anti-Warrior is voiced by Ed from Ed, Ed and Eddie. That, uh, that apparently blew a few people's minds.